now. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about Open Stories, um, a project I'm starting to work on, has been an idea and slowly growing, um, and hoping to get some initiative on. This is intended to be a more interactive session. Um, so I'm going to ask you to participate, make comments, <coughs> suggestions. This is one of the few times I will say comments are appreciated, hopefully as long as they're constructive. Um, if you say this is a terrible idea, that'll not be the best. Um, in order to bribe you with uh, to participate a little bit more, I do have stickers. To be entirely disclosure, um, they are my, my employee, employer stickers, Ubiquity Press and Open Access Publisher. But I got some resist paywall stickers. So um, I got a handful of Open Kitten stickers. These are quite popular. So if you um, participate, shout out some answers, um, go to the mic. Um, you can come and get some stickers at the end. So fair deal. Um, what I want to do is uh, there'll be times where you're welcome. If you have something short to say, you're welcome to shout it out. I'll go ahead and repeat it just so we know everybody can hear for any accessibility issues. Um, and then also if it's recording. If you have more of a long comment, would really appreciate it if you would go to the mic, because I won't be able to repeat that. Um, but if you're like maybe a sentence max. Um, all right. So what is Open Stories? Um, it is a project seeking to collect success stories of open advocates and practitioners in order to show that an open, successful career is possible. So why do we need this? Um, as I think the majority of the room, if not every single person, recognizes that researchers see open as a risk. There are a handful of researchers who have done a great job of this um, and their success stories. And so if we could gather and collect all these stories, it could be a way of convincing people that it's not um, that risky. Um, there's concern about not getting promotion and scooping. So this could dispel some of those concerns. Um, it reframes the conversation from risk to success, which I think is important that often um, we have very negative framing when we talk about open issues. So this is a way of reframing it in a positive light that's about how open can benefit your career. Um, usable examples for both advocates and librarians. As a former librarian myself, it's really helpful to have an example that a faculty member, researcher, student can connect with. Um, and that's also why it's so important to engage researchers with stories of those they identify with. Um, I think we have a couple amazing stories out there, but if you're at an institution where you don't feel you identify with those case examples, um, maybe it's a case example from an Ivy League school, but you're at State University, that doesn't always um, have the same connection. Um, maybe somebody is working in a different field, so you're like, well, that works for that field. It works for them. Um, but by providing stories that people can identify with based on uh, career level, institution type, discipline, um, country level, that could potentially be a catalyst. And so some of these stories are exist. Um, there uh, was, um, uh, there was a blog that exists that was uh, collecting blogs of open access success stories. So not a brand new idea. idea. Don't want to entirely reinvent the wheel by leaving these out. So part of it would be to collect these examples. I think my hair doesn't like the mic. Um, I'll just, I'll t hopefully, I'll just try not to. Yeah, we have a short amount of time. Um, there's already some um, open scientists who have blogs discussing um, their success. Um, so these are already out there we can gather. Um, there's also talks um, uh, such as um, Aaron McKernan's um, being open as an early career researcher. These things already exist. Um, so the first step is to gather them. Um, when I first conceived this idea, um, did a mock-up on Google Maps just to kind of explain how we could have a worldwide map dotting all these stories so people could search by it by location. Um, so it's, it's funny that Aaron's here. Uh, so one example is, you know, if someone were going down to Mexico and examining it, they would find Aaron's story uh, based on location. Um, another example uh, that has since come up between now and then um, is the OER world map. This is based on OpenStreetMap data. I think it looks great. Um, it can function in a very simple, a similar way. It's open source, so if anyone potentially wants to collaborate on a website, we could really um, use that as, as a base. Um, uh, and so this is one example of where, when you click on it, um, this is actually a person. A lot of the ones here are projects, um, uh, institutions work, organizations, um, and individuals without photos. So this was a really good example to, that I happened to click upon. Um, 
And so that highlights it, and you can go deeper into the profile. So that, that's one example of this something similar already existing. Um, stories uh, ideally would be searchable by location, discipline, language, institution type, and career level in order to find uh, what people identify with, what they're seeking, um, that it can be helpful to, to not not just learn about you know a U.S. researcher maybe who got tenure, but somebody in your own country um, or someone who's at your institution type rather than an R1 institution. But what else should be included? Oh, I left anyway. Um, so, does anyone have any suggestions that I'm missing of those five? This uh, we use the first side list because I forgot institution type on the second. Um, but does anyone have anything that you think is missing from that list? Eight. Oh, sorry. Eight? Oh, no. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know if we should, but I would just be curious about gender. Okay, yeah, no, that that's very valid. Okay. Um, I, that, that's something I think to, to ask if someone wanted to include and disclose. Okay, because. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, I messed up there, yeah. Uh, audience member suggested um, potentially including gender as a category. So, Peter. Um, another issue was um, your research goals. I mean, that's part of your research uh, portfolio. You know, where are you going? I don't know how you would, it's different for discipline. Okay. And, and maybe more like identity, the gender and identity. Yeah. Like how do you identify as a scholar? What, yeah. what, what is your, who is your tribe? Okay, so Peter suggests um, potentially including research goals and how you, what your identity as a scholar is. And then there was a hand raised back there. Are you interested only in stories that are successes or? Because so, question about am I only interested in stories that are successes? Um, for the purpose of a project to highlight success stories, yes. <laughs> um, because otherwise it's not an open success story and that's what the, the project would be well, for. I mean, maybe what I'm thinking is obstacles or something like that that, that were overcome, or I don't know how you would, how you would characterize those in a searchable way. Yeah. So comment that um, using uh, obstacles that someone's overcome. Um, I don't, yeah, I agree that I'm not sure how those would be searchable, but um, could potentially, I think we learn more not from someone who did something great the first go, but you know, if they, they face certain roadblocks, um, that's certainly, can you, Katie? That's oh, what I was okay. All right. One more comment. Um, I had one thing yeah. that was maybe um, like degrees. You have discipline, but I'm, a, like, I'm an academic yeah. librarian. I also have a PhD. Yeah. I'm an academic librarian. I'm tenured. Okay. Uh, so I think it's sort of like, I almost feel like I have to give a disclaimer. Yeah. Uh, when I say, yes, I have a successful career and I'm really open, but I'm a librarian. So yeah. It's not the same. It is different. So maybe an yeah. MLIS or a PhD or an ed. Like yeah. A, you know, doctors, okay. Whatever it is. That's a really great suggestion. The suggestion was to include uh, the degree um, uh, within the search tool. And Aaron, do you have one more to sneak in? Yeah. Maybe related to career level, maybe related to discipline. What type of track you're on? Are you okay. on tenure track? Are you not on tenure track? Yes. You're on tenure track. Okay. Are you research tenure track? Okay. Or education, those can differ as well. Okay. So Aaron's um, suggestion was to include uh, what type of uh, track you're on, um, as far, because that does um, impact what is going to be applicable to whoever is finding it. These are all really great suggestions. Thank you. This is why I wanted to do um, this session here, because I wanted to gain feedback and not just make something that I thought fit my own mindset of like what was needed or what a couple people who maybe joined the project, but getting all these ideas um, when something's still in flux. So the current status, not much has happened. It takes a long time to build something good. I have slowly learned over the years to be more of the turtle in the race, right? Um, and uh, so this was conceived a few years ago. There was a few failed uh, small grant applications. Um, I'm not a developer. I can do very, very basic websites. This is not going to be that basic, which is also why there's not a full website yet. But um, And that's where the, the greatest need is. But the current status is I participated in the Mozilla Sprint um, in May. Um, Got some good feedback there. Um, worldwide contributors, which is really great. Um, the, there's a draft of the recording guide, um, but that's not in the final stage yet. Um, so next steps, um, I'm going to start recording the first open success stories at MozFest um, at the end of this month. Um, 
And this is in order to have to work out some kinks, make sure the recording guide is going to be satisfactory before it gets released. And also, when a website prototype is up, there is some um, content in order to um, be in there and not just be bare. Um, uh, and then to release the recording guide when it is ready and find collaborators for building the website. So anybody is interested. Um, so there is this draft of uh, the recording guide. Um, and so after MozFest um, and working out some more kinks, we'll make that, again, a call for any further co contributions. And hopefully by the beginning of the year, it'll be solid and will be able to be sent out, especially to institutions where there's somebody who are doing outreach activities who might want to highlight some stories from their own institution. Um, so if you do want to help, uh, we have, I uh, have uh, I, I created a GitHub repo for open stories. Very simple, github.com slash open stories. I have also, um, if you're on Twitter, be right before I came into the session, tweeted out to the hashtag slides for this talk that also be available in um, uh, the, the conferences Zenodo. Um, and then, but you can get this GitHub link and then you can sign up to for the recording notification. Link is also included in the tweet. Um, uh, so if when it does, it's basically the one-time email of when the recording guide is ready and available. You get an email, get invited to help contribute. Um, and if anybody is interested in um, working on something at the earlier stages in the next couple months, um, uh, if you are great at websites uh, or want to help uh, create or have experience with recording, maybe want to help um, include best practices, would love to hear from you. Um, and that can be direct um, or through GitHub, depending on what you feel most comfortable with. Um, but I primarily want to spend um, the session, um, and we got about seven minutes. Oh, okay. So seven minutes to talk, and then more discussion. Okay. Well, th we're going to leave right into the discussion. Um, so. Uh, but I want to use the majority of this time for actual conversation and discussion. Um, uh, this is a project that's in development. I'm not an expert on this. Uh, this is not something to showcase. And I think we benefit the most at conferences by uh, actually spending the time together and talking among each other and learning and sharing um, rather than just blurting um, out. Um, so these are some prompts. Um, so, and so constructive comments again. So what am I missing, um, but constructively, please? Um, what would you recommend for the recording guidelines? Um, perhaps you've done oral story t collecting before and you have some good suggestions to include. Um, how can this be expanded to help you? Um, I'm coming very much from the mindset of a librarian who, know, who would love to collect stories and how, how it could be useful for my outreach and education and be able to highlight stories similar to my own faculty. Um, and that's often when I make resources in my head, um, that's who I'm, I feel most ag akin to. But if anybody, you might have your own situation where you think um, th this, this, adding this area might be more helpful. Um, what are your ideas for crowdsourcing stories? Um, so far, I think it would be great to have recording booths at some conferences. MozFest will be the first one. Um, uh, OpenCon could be a great one to collect some great stories of early career researchers. Um, but do you have any other suggestions? Um, potentially an open access week recording booth at an institution. But that's a lot of extra um, time and labor. And it depends on the institution that will be appropriate. Um, and just overall, how can this be improved? Um, would love for you to use the mic. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and let's let's just uh, have a conversation for the next seven to ten minutes. Thank you very much. Um, was wondering whether you have a definition of what a story is. What okay. is a story? Okay. The reason why yeah. I ask this is because I'm involved in a project. We are yeah. collecting case studies in relation to research ethics yeah. and research integrity. After some time, we realized that, OK, what do we mean when we talk about a case? What is a case? A yeah. case can be a historical case. Yeah. A case can be a fictional case. Yeah. A case can have several um, uh, elements. Uh, how do we define a case? Yeah. And th that helped us a lot in relation yeah. to being a, lot, a little bit more specific. And I was wondering whether you've had uh, a develop, whether, you, whether you've like first thought about it and second developed a kind of definition of what you mean with a story? Yeah. Um, sometimes I forget my philosophy training and defining my terms. Um, I've only actually been asked, not yet about what is a story, but that's a really valid question, but asked 
what do you mean by success? Because uh, that can really vary and be um, a different. As far as story goes, um, in my own head, that is uh, the story of an individual's progress and their career and how um, very more personal telling about themselves um, rather than um, uh, something just factual, but like a storytelling, the way you would maybe um, uh, shorten and condense uh, your career story of how you came to where you be and how open helped you get there. Um, but that I think that it is important to define success and both story, and that needs to be clearly defined, um, or show examples of maybe what that inc can include um, while allowing some flexibility. I'm not 100% sure though, because my definition is just mine, and I don't want to exclude anything. So maybe it would be really helpful to d do an initial draft and then ask for a, like contr contributions from others to expand them on that. Um, and include any potential examples. I really like to find, in this situation, because it's a little vague, we don't want to um, constrict it too much. Um, I do think highlighting, okay, well, here's three to five examples of what, what is um, success or what is story. Um, so that way people can maybe find themselves in it. They can identify, like, okay, well, then I have a story because I fit that, um, rather than um, just some words, um, I think could be potentially helpful. Uh just a clarification, are you also planning to link out to existing stories on, on the web? Oh, uh, yes, like so gathering, um, so things like Erin's talk that she gave, there's our YouTube video, can grab that. Um, that's, that's, that's a really good example. People who've written blogs, linking to that, don't need to totally reinvent the wheel there. Um, if people feel more comfortable writing a blog post, that can be linked. Um, I think often hearing from people's own voices um, can be particularly helpful, um, but um, if don't need to redo everything. Um, something already exists, or someone's putting up somewhere else, we can just grab that, so. If you could, sorry, come up. So I uh, keep thinking about library and wardrobe, which yeah. I've never like contributed to, but um, they keep having like ambassadors at different conferences yeah. and stuff, and we all, okay, I'm sweeping generalization, but a lot of us have phones yeah. to like mm -hmm. record these. Yep. So, but I, I mean, then there's accessibility issues and also quality issues. I get that, but I don't know. Yeah. Just a suggestion to like yeah. find your ambassadors at yeah. different places. I think that's a great idea. Um, for any context, for those who are not familiar with Librarian Wardrobe, um, you can check it out at, I believe, librarianwardrobe.tumblr.com. Um, I think that's the link. Um, but basically, it's um, uh, photos of what librarian, like just different photos of librarians, because there's a very stereotypical idea of what librarians look like. Um, uh, and so this is to move away from those stereotypes, provide um, examples like this is what we all, like we all look very, very different. Um, and some people look like punks and some people look like, uh, like the, the traditional cardigan wearers that we have stereotypically in our minds. So, um, but yeah, the ambassador program, I think it could be a good idea. Um, and. Uh, it doesn't take much to do decent quality recording. Like you can do that on a nice digital camera even. Um, but some phones are doing way better than some video cameras as well. So I think that's, that's a great idea and um, can be collected, so. Yeah, uh, my question is following up on the definition of story and definition of success is what's the definition of open? So I think we're yeah. <laughs> pretty much, because I mean, yeah. there's a lot of degrees to that. I mean, you can, I yeah. mean, you have like open access publications, open data, open code, yeah. uh, to the point where you can have like your open online notebook or update, but, yeah. but I mean, there's degrees to that. So how open do you have to be? Because I mean, yeah. there, there, there could be people who are really, really like open science advocates yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. who will meet here or in the, but there's yeah. actually like scientists that took little steps and maybe like the Deposited a preprint yeah, and, yeah. and had a lot of success yeah, with that. Yeah. So I mean, you don't want to lose those. So no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, how open do you have to be to? Thank you. Okay. Um, so defining open success and story first on my list, <laughs> um, and it'll be the top of like everything. Inviting people. That's great because I at least open. I feel a little bit more confident right now drafting an initial definition, um, and I do agree that it should be as wide. And if 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 just posting one preprint help somebody and they feel like it was successful for them, even if I made, I just got this great collaborator, that's how it benefited me. Not, it's not the reason they got tenure, but it, they found a collaborator um, and that they really enjoyed the project. That is a success. So I think um, that also helps with defining things. Thank you so much. 
Yeah. So uh, I guess this question depends on how far you want to actually go with some of these stories, how much detail you want to get into. But I guess something that would be really useful for me to see is what does an open researcher tenure packet look like? Okay. So, so how are you formulating your CV and how yeah. are you formulating your research statement? Yeah. And how, like, something I'm struggling right, I'm starting this process. And I'm not sure how to convince my department that all the open access, open science, open research stuff I do is actually part of my real research, right? Mm -hmm. And not some hobby yeah, that yeah. I spend too much time on. So, so how you integrate that into a presentable tenure packet. Okay. That would be super useful yeah. for me to see as part of these stories. Okay. That's, so especially know. for ones that are really doing it in a very big way. Yeah. I think that's like great. Titus, you have his yeah. example. Yeah. And so I would love to see what resources yeah. did he submit to his department to convince him that this okay. was something yeah. valuable that he's doing. Great. So I'm so glad this is recorded because this, these are too many ideas to remember. All right. Um, just uh, similar to what, what our definition of open is, going back to what things should we be creating metadata fields for, I think that mm -hmm. would be a useful one uh, for me is to say kind of what, you know, is this open science, mm -hmm. but even more granular, like, right, is it publication in a, in a fully open access yeah. journal? Is it, is it green, you know, depositing in my, in, yeah. in my institutional repository? One question I get a lot, and this might relate to early career people, is open ETDs. I'm a mm -hmm. librarian that works with our yeah. graduate school. So did you know all of this fear around, oh, wait, what do you mean yeah. this is going to be out there? And mm -hmm. how long can I uh, put this in an embargo? So success around, around open ETDs yeah. would be really good for early career people. Yeah. And, pre-career people right. in some senses. I so. think that is something like, you know, if you're doing, because I've run um, dissertation and theses workshops where when you try to tell people like why they should be OA, having an example of a few students and I had one, and I think this is why the stories also matter to me so much when it comes to um, educating um, my students and faculty. Not currently, I'm not a librarian right now, but um, in the past I had a, a undergraduate student who's a thesis was made open and discovered by a professor of the Grenoble School of Management, and he asked to include it in his class teachings. That's huge, and it was great to be able to tell like all future students that, but that was so rare that I had that story. So, um, okay. So, so I mean, um, there, there's stories and there's stories, and then there's publications, <laughs> and 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 to a certain extent, um, in 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 creating a research project like. Uh, you, you have a plan, you have an execution, you, you, uh, you create a lab book, or you have a process book, you're going forward. And, and, and that, having that process book um, of your journey to be an open scientist for this particular project could be of interest to a much broader community okay. than just the, the tenure review committee. You know? and, and having the discipline to, to reflect and document mm -hmm. how you're being an open scholar. Okay. Uh, now, now uh, we have a. Um, I'm I'm working with the Inclusive Media and Design Center at Ryerson, and mm -hmm. uh, developed this tool uh, from the hospitality sector. It creates it creates a digital scrapbook. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so uh, you comment on your day. You have a 90 second um, snippet. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's in the moment, top of mind. It's believable. It's acceptable. And and. That can be reflective, but it also could be. We're, we're thinking now that it can be, or could be, um, sort of collated and curated into a story. Okay. You know, there's many yeah. documentaries where you have the interview, the repeated interview of the person over yeah. time, and that's okay. Great. So, so this type of medium, where as the person is going on the journey, saying, you know, starts up. This is what I'm trying to do. Okay. Uh, and, and, and registering on a regular basis as events happen, as challenges emerge in a short, accessible manner. Okay. Um, that can create, uh, could be created and then produced into a publication. Yeah. Okay. That, Great. That, that could be archived and indexed yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's definitely an idea. And then it could, could so, so then you could do a meta analysis yeah. of, of all of these. These elements, yeah. so it becomes a data, a, da um, a database, to uh, to, to um, represent yeah. in a real, authentic way how these different people navigated okay. the barriers. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Do we have time to finish the last two people? We've got four minutes. Oh, 
Okay, I was like thinking we were running over. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Elizabeth? Hi, sorry. So thanks so much. I think this is a really great idea. Um, so just to say that I maybe am kind of the target of this. So I'm actually an early career researcher. I'm a graduate student. Yeah. I am working openly, trying mm -hmm. to continue to work openly. Um, and I think for me, one of the things that's been really valuable is having a sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, so not only knowing that people succeed, mm -hmm. but also having a way to reach out to them yeah. or to kind of share with that. Okay. So I wonder if one of the things you could collect when you're kind of yeah. recording these stories is if people are comfortable kind of having having them join into some sort of either like workspace or share okay. contact details yeah. or something where people That's could reach out. Great idea. So, so yeah. awesome. I love that. Um, and part of this too is wanting to make sure like whatever the submission form is that we know exactly everything we should have and need and not have to retroactively go back. Um, and so the metadata, context details, all this extra information is great. All right. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm at Dartmouth College in the library. And um, about four years ago, we started mm -hmm. a poster exhibit there called Open Dartmouth Research Data yeah. Code Ideas, where we feature um, students, faculty, staff who are either publishing mm -hmm. openly or open access advocates. That's and we awesome. have a picture of them and a quote from them about why they support yeah. open. And we just continue to build. It started as a print exhibit. And then yeah. now we've moved it to a digital exhibit. Yeah. And it scrolls on our IR um, site. And so I was wondering if I, it, I know that you're looking for oral yeah. stories, but are you looking for other types of? That is definitely something I think just to pull in um, uh, would that that fits that. Um, okay. In my head of wanting to collect new stories, um, I particularly like oral storytelling and, and getting that video or the voice. If anyone's familiar with StoryCorps, um, it's a, it's a U.S. initiative, I, I believe, U.S. initiative uh, to collect stories, um, and it's uh, um, sometimes it streams on N NPR on Sundays. I think, but uh, it's a beautiful way of sharing stories. But I think if things already exist, like what you're doing, mm -hmm. collecting that, sharing it out, um, it also provides an example then to anybody else who uses it that they could do something similar. Uh, but I think that I would that that would count, and I would want to make sure it's linked out to, and that they have a little spot. On the and then website. I just wanted to add a couple of thoughts, to maybe help you with mm -hmm. gathering your story. So. Yeah. Recently, I um, I also managed the Open Access Publishing Fund at yeah. Dartmouth, mm -hmm. and so when I fund an author, I'll ask them if they'd be willing to be featured in our Ooh. exhibit. So that yeah. may be a suggestion for people yeah. working in that arena. And then the other thought I had was um, I have a colleague at the Library of mm -hmm. Congress who's working with the oral history collection, yeah. and I wondered if there would be a way once you have your site up and running yeah. to be somehow connected with what the Library of Congress is doing in their oral histories. Okay. That's a, these are all amazing suggestions. Thank you so much, especially because like uh, you know you, you just came in here to, to, to you know go to the session. And you just made everything so much better. Uh, I'm glad it's recorded. Also, and hopefully I can figure out you know and credit ideas and where they came from. Um, thank you all so much. Um, <laughs> Um, and uh, I, I think um, we'll let you give, give you more time to get a suggestion. And um, come and take a sticker if you want a sticker. Um, the open kitten ones will go real fast. So they're the most popular. Thank you all so much.